Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for tuning in. So today's video, we're going to talk about zone focusing. Yes, zone focusing. So doing my switch to digital to film, I've had to learn to just zone focus. And you hear a lot of videos or you see a lot of videos on YouTube. And personally for me, it's just it's not sufficient enough, so I'm going to be making a video, hopefully a comprehensive video for simpletons like me. So the idea with zone focusing is ultimately you want to make this a point and shoot. And when you start switching into film, you hear this adage of people saying, oh, I love shooting film because it kind of just slows down the process for you. You know, you just take things step by step, slows down. Oh, I love shooting film. Well, if you're a street photographer like me, that's kind of the opposite of what you want to do. Let's take a dumb, dumb analogy. So inversely, if you were to come to me at 18 years old and were like, hey, Jay, I found this like brand new condom. It's the thinnest condom in the world. It almost feels like you're just wearing nothing. It'll make you go just like this. I'd be like, um, uh, I think I could do that just fine by myself. Do you have anything that'll make me, you know, do the opposite, last a little longer, something like that? Essentially, that's the opposite of zone focusing. I'm here to, for lack of a better term, help you shoot faster. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna be talking to you about 35 millimeter lenses. So everything is gonna be justified by 35 millimeter lenses. And I'll get into 28 millimeter and 50 millimeter lenses a little later. So again, this is just to kind of start you off. So right now, I got something set up to you right here on this piece of paper. This is going to essentially be your kind of focus scale on your lens. Every manual lens has this. You have your aperture up top and then you have your feet or meters at the bottom. So your kind of focusing scale here. So I have that set up for you right here. All right, look at this. So this is gonna be the bottom half of the lens. So this is your aperture, so you have F4, F8, F16, F22, and then on the other side, pretty much the same thing. And all this is represented in your lenses. And then, now, I have the top half, which is right here. And my apologies, all this is going to be in feet. Um, again, I'm visually showing you guys the idea because in meters, you'll be able to kind of get the idea and you'll be able to, you know, do it by meters. So all this is by feet for now, all right? So this is the top half of the lens, which is right here. So this is, on the longest end, it's infinity. This is 15 feet, seven feet, five feet here, four feet, three feet, all right? So, all right. So the first rule, what you wanna do for zone focusing is set your lens to f16 because you want a deep depth of field you want to essentially make this a point and shoot camera where you just bring it to your eye you compose and then you shoot boom let's see boom so bring it to your eye compose shoot that's it I'm not focusing, I'm not, imagine this hand over here. So boom, I compose, shoot. Compose, shoot. Mind you, I'm not focusing because, because I'm zone focusing, everything in that zone should be in focus. So let me go ahead and show you a physical visual representation here. So this film right here, this is going to represent all the photos in focus. And don't worry, I can kind of waste film because a lot of my beginning film shots were complete. So I can waste film like this, all right? So this film 
This right here is going to represent F16. You see this? So 16 here. Um, the closest end, 16 here. So anything here is going to be in focus. See right here? Everything in focus. And the first thing what you want to do is, and the easiest thing, is to put the furthest end on the right side of your lens. You want to put it to infinity. Infinity and then put it to f16. Watch, I'll show you here. So you put the lens here to f16. All right, boom. So now you have f16 on the right side of uh, infinity. So right here, infinity and f16. And then pretty much everything here from infinity onwards to about, if you look here, four and a half feet will be in focus, all right? So four and a half feet to infinity, all in focus. You don't even have to worry about it. And again, let me show you just a little quick kind of visual thing that might just, just blow your mind. All right, so notice on your lens, your distance scale in feet or meters is left to right, all right? But you don't see distance like that. You see distance from forward to backwards things like that, all right? So if you were to literally turn your lens like this, that should be able to easily let you visualize distance because it's weird how the lens is set up, it's left to right, but distance is actually here. So I'll actually show you a piece of paper right here. Um, so instead of left to right, watch this if I were to turn this this way. Boom. So now distance, let me show you, four and a half feet from closest to you, four and a half feet closest, and then all the way to five feet, seven feet, 15 feet, infinity, all right? So boom, closest to you, all the way over. So if you literally just put the lens vertical like this, it'll just help you kind of visualize zone focusing, depth of field, feet, all that kind of stuff, all right? So that's just a simple visual kind of clue. All right, so let's go back to the regular, which is the regular lens here. All right, so cool. So I put everything to infinity. I put my lens to infinity and F16, and then now four and a half feet here. All right, so again, four and a half feet to infinity. So anything in that zone is in focus. You see that? So in focus is everything in the film. Out of focus is everything over here out of focus, all right? So now essentially, boom, you take the photo, you shoot. Take the photo, shoot. And trust me, you're just gonna have to trust that those things are in focus. I know this is a new concept for you. It's just like when you're first getting into a relationship and you kind of don't trust this person, but you should, you kind of have to if you want this to be a fruitful relationship. Same thing with zone focusing, all right? So you're just gonna have to trust that it's in focus, all right? So boom, F16, that's now in focus, all right? So simple enough. So now this is where things get a little tricky. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you're shooting at F8 because not all the time you can shoot at F16 because there's so much light out there so you can actually stretch that zone out to F16. Normally, if you're in London, you have to actually shoot, like me, you have to shoot at F8. Let me show you what that looks like. So now this film strip is gonna represent what shots are gonna be in focus at F8, all right? So let me take this away. Now this is F8 here, boom. Now, as you can literally see, everything is shortened up and that zone is a lot less, all right? So look, it's almost damn near half. So this zone 
it went from infinity to here. So just like at f16, let's put on the right side of the lens, let's go to infinity, all right? So infinity to, let's see what's in focus now. Let's say just for round numbers purpose, let's just say it's 10 feet. So now you have infinity to 10 feet. That's in focus. It went from infinity to four and a half feet. That's a significant amount, you know? So that's, it becomes pretty tough to kind of just use this as a point and shoot at 10 feet to infinity. A, you have to know your distance scale, you have to know feet and so on and so forth, and you can only shoot anything from 10 feet to infinity. So now this is what people do when they have to shoot at f8 in zone focus, all right? So instead of putting it at infinity to like 10 feet, they kind of narrow that zone, they move that zone over to maybe whatever they're comfortable shooting at. So let's say this is, I moved it over six feet to 15 feet, all right? So six to 15 feet. And that seems like, okay, manageable, but again, you have to know distance scale. You have to know, all right, this camera right here, that's about four feet. All right, my TV on the other side, mm, I would say that's eight feet. And back at 15 and so on and so forth. So if you don't know the distance scale, you're going to make your life a lot harder because now you're at six feet and 15 feet. And I'm just gonna show, uh, I'm just gonna quickly show you what it looks like when you're zone focusing at F4 and F2. See this? So this is F4, this is F2. Watch, let's see what your zone is at F4. F4. So now we're at F4. Now look at what your zone becomes. Seven feet to like 12 feet. Your zone is starting to become smaller and smaller. Now F2, right here. Now look at your zone. Like bruh, at F2, you have no zone. So that's hardly impossible. It's, it's just silly to even try. You should just be manual focusing your lens at F2 at that point and just lining your rangefinder up or line, lining whatever your SLR up at F2. Don't even, don't even try to zone focus, all right? So now cool. Now you get the idea. So at F8, you have a zone. So the cool thing about um, analog film and all this kind of stuff is you start to actually learn what distance is. You start to learn and pick up because you're doing it more and more and you're practicing. So right now, like I showed you earlier, I can now distance scale. Oh, this is like four feet. That's about eight, 10 feet, something like that, 15. And I start to get a lot better at that. But right now, since you're a beginner at zone focusing, you want that zone as wide as possible. So again, let's go back to F16 here and show you how wide that zone is, all right? That's a pretty wide zone, all right? All right, so you want everything in that F16 zone as best you can. So mind you, what I'm showing here is a 35 millimeter focal length. So imagine, take that same scenario and add a 28 millimeter focal length, all right? So again, I don't know the science behind this. Well, the, the a spherical lens and the round, oh, whatever. Like, just know that the wider you go on your, in your focal length, the wider that kind of depth of field and that zone focusing zone is, all right? So let's say hypothetically 35 is this at F16, 28 would be this. So if you go to 50 millimeter, this will be your zone, all right? So some pro tips would be try to always start on a 35 millimeter lens or a 28 millimeter because that becomes wider. 
let's say you're zone focusing f8 on a 28 millimeter that might feel like you're zone focusing at f16 already on a 35 millimeter you know what i'm saying so those are a couple pro tips and here's another pro tip let's say again you have shitty weather i would suggest start shooting black and white and push things two stops to 1600 to get you that extra light so instead of rating your film at 400 push it two stops and rate it at 1600 so again you're widening that kind of zone so instead of if you're at again what makes a proper exposure is at f8 why not push it one or two stops to get it as close to f16 as much as you can imagine fuck it shooting f22 let's say what 22 is let me just add this up let's see what 22 f22 is and then i put the infinity all the way to the right what is that two feet one and a half feet like everything is in focus from infinity to two to one and a half feet unless you're the first person who ever wants to do street photography macro photography and you want to zone focus from something that's like right here like unless you're creating a new genre macro street photography like nah you don't need to get that close bro <laughs> like that should be perfect f22 even better all right so those are a couple tips for you to just zone focus and just again you want your zone as wide as possible all right so now some quick questions can you zone focus on an slr of course you can silly yes you can on an slr it just makes things a little difficult because you don't have a small rangefinder patch, you're actually looking through the entire lens. And when you look through the entire lens, like let me show you in the diagram here, the middle part will be in focus. So let's say I'm at F16 and everything from infinity to four and a half feet. That's my zone, right? But if I'm shooting an SLR, the only thing that will truly be in focus is what's directly in the middle. So let's say that's 10 feet. So 10 feet will be in focus and the rest in your lens in this viewfinder, everything will be blurry. But if you actually set everything properly, put F16 to infinity over here and four and a half feet, you're still gonna be in that zone. It's just very awkward to kind of look through an SLR and look through the lens and think that, well, I'm in the zone, why isn't it in focus? Well, obviously it's focused on the very middle of that, which is 10 feet. But again, remember this whole trust issue thing? You just gotta trust it, brah. Um, so now why people love zone focusing on a rangefinder is because you have the frame lines, you're not actually looking through the lens, you're only looking through this rangefinder, and then um, the rangefinder patch in the middle is this small little rectangle, and that's the only like obstruction in the actual viewfinder. And again, that rangefinder patch, just like the SLR, will be focused on the exact middle of it, right here. But you don't see anything blurry, you don't see anything, the only thing that's kind of weird is just that small little rectangle there. So that's why people love and prefer to do zone focusing on a rangefinder is because there's just less obstruction in the frame or in the viewfinder. And again, I think um, this is just a very handy tip for you guys to kind of see how to zone focus. And to be honest, it just gets you better with distance scaling. Like you should, as a photographer, know, oh, this is four feet, that's six, that's eight feet that's 12 feet all that but when you're shooting digital 
you don't give a fuck about all that because you have autofocus. Like everything is focusing the distance for you. So you don't need to mentally calculate, oh, this is in my zone or that's three feet, that's four feet. And so this is why when I moved to film photography, it was one of the smarter things I did for my photography career as a whole because it enabled me to just figure things out, distances and just exposing by eye, all these kind of things. So now the question is, since I've been doing this for a little bit, do I zone focus? No. So I actually graduated myself to where I actually don't use zone focusing at all. I can actually focus by feel. Um, it's kind of crazy, but it's, it's so cool. Like I know where my lens is without even looking at my rangefinder patch and Anyways, it's a whole thing you this is you kind of have to master your tool by then But if you guys are interested in another focusing video on how I can how I focus by feel Like I literally don't even have to look at the rangefinder patch or anything I just bring it to my eye boom shoot or I pre-focus by just the feel of my lens and I just shoot and ultimately I use zone focusing at f8 or at f16 as some kind of like parachute or some kind of um kind of backup scale but yeah i don't need to do that anymore but if you guys want to see that video please comment and i'll make that video on how you can focus by feel it's actually a pretty cool kind of process but you really have to put in the work so yeah I think that's it guys. Thank you guys for watching. I know this was kind of a long video, but I wanted to, I feel, I felt like this was a video that needed to be kind of redone because I thought the information out there just wasn't sufficient enough for simpletons like me. So I hope this helped. Um, hope you guys liked it and um, just let me know how it goes in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, be cool, be nice, be sexy, be positive. All right, cool. If you can, if you can zone focus at F2, like, wow, like, I tip my hat to you, like, you should probably be in Magnum photography using Magnum condoms and having a Magnum six shooter. Like you are triple Magnum if you can zone focus at F2, all right?